What's going on, guys? It's Jimmy here, and welcome to our daily show where we discuss the fourth stimulus check update, the two new upcoming packages, the physical infrastructure package, as well as the next stimulus package named the American Families Plan, as well as what is going on in the world today. And first off, if you ever wanted to know how much the president and the vice president make, well, today is your lucky day. As President Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris have released their 2020 tax returns. Now, keep in mind, this is for 2020 before both of them became president and vice president. President Biden and First Lady Jill Biden reported adjusted gross income of $607,000. Not bad, right? They reported paying $157,000 in federal income taxes for an effective tax rate of 25.9%. The Biden's income was lower in 2020 than it was in their previous year, where they earned an income of $985,000, just under $1 million, and paid a total tax of nearly $300,000 for an effective tax rate of 30%. Much of President Biden's income comes from a corporation named Gia Kappa, an entity that Jill Biden uses for book payments and speaking engagements, as well as income from pensions and annuities. Their income also includes $13,000 from her work at Virginia Community College, and they donated $30,000, or about 5% of their income, to charitable donations. However, Vice President Kamala Harris and her husband, actually earned more money than the president. Vice President Kamala Harris and her husband, Doug Emhoff, reported on their 2020 uh, federal tax returns just under $1.7 million, and they paid taxes of $621,000 for an effective tax rate of 36.7%. Ouch, that kind of stings paying over $600,000 in just one year for taxes. Ooh, I can feel the pain on that one. The bulk of their income came from uh, her husband's work as an attorney. This income also included Harris's salary as a U.S. senator, which is $174,000, which was only 10% of their actual total income. But get this. The year before, in 2019, they had an adjusted gross income of more than $3 million in one year. Yeah, yeah, a lot of money. Yeah, let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. Again, this is before they became president and vice president. Speaking of another rich uh, former president, former President Donald Trump signals that he's ready to get back in the game and that he's going to start resuming presidential rallies for his presidential 2024 run uh, starting as early as next month. That is, as it is expected that he's going to officially announce that he's running for presidency for the Republican Party again in 2024. And it's a very good chance that we will be seeing a rematch of former President Donald Trump and current president, President Joe Biden. Let me know your thoughts on who you think will win if we see the exact same rematch. I think uh, the other top Republican candidates is probably Republican Senator Josh Hawley. And who knows, we might see a a dark horse candidate, maybe like Mark Cuban or uh, something like that. Let me know who you think would be a good Republican candidate if you're a Republican. If you're a Democrat, you're probably like, nobody, nobody will be a good Republican candidate, right? Because that's just kind of how Republicans and Democrats think about each other. I know, I get it. Remember how about a day or two ago, I announced that... um, Officials, Florida officials in Palm Beach are actually preparing for President Donald Trump to possibly be indicted. Well, as you can see here, former President Donald Trump has been sued 29 times now and counting. He's the subject of at least three criminal investigations, and his personal attorney's apartment and offices were raided last month, Rudy Giuliani, and his ex-personal lawyer, Michael Cohen has predicted that Rudy Giuliani will, quote, absolutely turn on former President Donald Trump to avoid a lengthy sentence. Thanks to the last attorney general, the Biden Justice Department could charge him with obstructing the Mueller Mueller investigation. 
But the more pressing issue is the criminal investigation by Manhattan District Attorney Cyrus Vance Jr., who, among other things, has Trump's tax returns in hand, and uh, he got that through a, um, a court ruling. And a trove of documents that could be used against former President Donald Trump in a criminal case. And um, apparently this this looks like it, it could be happening actually in the future. I, I don't like to report things that uh, may or may not happen, but I do like to report of what could happen, right? I, I know that sounds kind of weird, but um, it looks like this this could be happening in the near future. And in fact, the Florida Palm Beach County prosecutor says that the Florida governor, Ron DeSantis, cannot stop former President Donald Trump from getting extradited to New York if he's indicted. So uh, Florida Palm Beach County prosecutor has actually come out with an official statement on this, um, kind of gearing up because they think there's going to be an indictment of former President Donald Trump. So uh yeah, let me know your thoughts on this. You can see it in black and white here. That's why I like to show you guys my sources. I just showed you multiple different sources as uh, this looks to be moving forward. If this happens with a criminal case against Trump, again, this doesn't mean he's guilty. He'll have to defend himself and stuff like that. But uh, it'll be major, major national news. I'm kind of <laughs> bringing you the news uh, before it's like really, really big news. But if this happens, it'll be like uh, groundbreaking major <laughs> national news yeah a former president in in uh in a criminal case yeah that's that's pretty serious regarding stimulus very good news from the federal reserve the federal reserve central bank's vice chairman clarita says that the job market calls for continued stimulus and says that there should be at least one more stimulus check or one more stimulus payment and that the job market and the economy calls for this and it needs to be done. The Fed also went on to say that nearly one in four Americans or 25% of Americans ended 2020 worse off financially and that doesn't even count the first several months of this year which we know has been very, very bad for millions and millions of Americans. And this calls for at least another stimulus check. In fact, when the third stimulus check came out in March, consumer spending actually had a very good month for retail sales, and it was a very good bright spot. However, the April retail sales come out and was completely flat, even though uh, there was still a lot of stimulus going out. And experts are saying that well, pretty obvious that if stimulus, if the third stimulus check wasn't there, retail sales in April would have actually been negative, which shows basically there's no sign of a recovery going on or very little. The April jobs report was just as bad or worse with only 25% of jobs created, which was 75% more expected. The uh, entire U.S. was expected to create over 1 million jobs in April and yet only created 266,000 down by 75% of what should have happened. And it's basically showing that the economy is still very, very slow and barely, barely creeping up. In fact, unemployment actually rose in April over March. And this is without any new unemployment benefits. They continued on at $300 per week the whole time. And um, this goes to show you that whether you're Republican or Democrat, they have very, very different views of things. Republicans are saying we need everybody to go back to work. We need to stop these unemployment bonuses, uh, the $300 per week and the extra weeks that you can get past your normal state uh, allotted amount of weeks. Uh, we need to send everybody back to work. In fact, there's 20 different Republican governors that said that they're going to do this starting as early as next month. They're going to cut unemployment bonuses. However, some states have announced instead of these $300 per week unemployment bonuses, they're going to, well, at least some states are going to offer back to work bonuses, such as Connecticut Governor Lamont has offered a $1,000 back to work bonus. And Arizona Governor Ducey has offered a $2,000 back to work bonus and is basically saying that we're going to pay people to go back to work instead of pay people to stay on unemployment. However, Democrats think very differently. Here is Senator Bernie Sanders, who's the Senate budget chairman, the person in charge of the reconciliation process, which is how we pass the third stimulus check package and how we're likely going to pass the fourth stimulus check package as well. 
The number of Republican senators have said they are discontinuing the $300 a week federal supplement to unemployment insurance because they say it's a disincentive to work. There are stories out there that businesses are having trouble hiring people, and if you take out this 300 bucks a week, um, more people will, uh, I, I, I suppose to be colloquial, get off their ass and go to work. Um, it's fascinating to me, Senator, that that's where we think. When we have problems to solve, we think we go after the people who are unemployed at the moment, that that's where we think the, uh, the golden pot of money is. Well, Ali, as you may have seen, in those instances, uh, in Pennsylvania and elsewhere, where employers have raised wages, you know what? They're no longer having a labor shortage. The problem is not a labor shortage. The problem is that all over this country, workers are being asked to work for starvation wages. Women often do not have the child care that they need. People are still worried about being exposed to COVID. But what we have got to do is say to workers, you want to go out and get a job, that's fine. We're going to pay you a living wage. And when we do that, guess what? There is no labor shortage. And what the Republicans are saying by trying to do away with this supplement on top of unemployment is we're going to starve you back to work. Whether you like it or not, you're going to be forced to go back to work. My view is pay people a living wage. They will work. So, yeah, let me know your thoughts on this. Let me know what side of the fence you're on. As it seems like Republicans and Democrats have a very different uh, point of view over the absolute terrible jobs report and terrible retail sales report. Republicans are saying, let's send everybody back to work and stop the unemployment bonuses. Democrats are saying, what are you talking about? The, the economy is doing bad. That means we need to pass more stimulus. They're like, hey, guys, remember you passed five stimulus packages underneath former President Donald Trump and Mitch McConnell being Senate Majority Leader. They passed five packages, two of which had stimulus checks. There was three other packages that, that had things like vaccine money, uh, paycheck protection money, money for SNAPWIC and EBT, different programs like that. Republicans passed five packages being in control of the Senate and the presidency. The Democrats have now passed one package and have two more on the horizon and are basically mimicking what the Federal Reserve has now just come out and said, that there needs to be at least one more stimulus check. Basically, a fourth stimulus check update today, 2021, at least one more. In fact, a number of Democrats, I think it's uh, between 75 and 100, want a monthly recurring stimulus check, and official bills have been introduced in both the House and the Senate. The bill in the House is for a one-time $2,000 starter stimulus check, then followed by $1,000 monthly recurring payments that would go until one year after the pandemic is declared over. So for quite a long time, the bill that's been introduced in the Senate, co-sponsored by Senator Ed Markey and Elizabeth Warren, is for $2,000 monthly stimulus checks that would go until the pandemic is officially declared over by the government. So uh, my best guess would be around six months, maybe the end of this year, could be a little bit less, could be a little bit more. But this is what the Democrats are saying that they want to happen in this next package. And remember, the Democrats are now in control of the House, the Senate, and the presidency. And the Democrats are saying, hey, listen, when Republicans were in control of the Senate and the, and the presidency, they passed five stimulus packages. We, now being in control, have only passed one stimulus package yet to date. And uh, honestly, if you think that's going to be the last one you're probably not paying attention. They already have two more packages that they're talking about right now. The physical infrastructure package, of which we actually may have some very big news today on whether or not they're going to try to pass that package, which is said to create millions of jobs and will help us come out of the uh, recession or the depression quicker through the American Jobs Plan. Uh, they could be announcing today whether or not they're going to go at it with bipartisan support with the Republicans, which would be a much smaller bill if they do that, or if they're going to go ahead with the reconciliation process instead. We could get that uh, announcement today. There's been some news, some speculation that we might get that today. The stimulus package, the next one called the American Families Plan as well, I, uh, I don't think that there's going to be any way they're going to be able to pass it with Republican support. They're going to have to pass that through the reconciliation process, which is how they passed the third stimulus check package. Not a single Republican voted yes for that. So it really doesn't matter. Like, And again, not that I'm Republican or Democrat, but this is just kind of the reality of things. Like if Mitch McConnell was still in control of the Senate, 
I'd still be telling you the reality of things, right? And when we passed all those last packages, I was telling you up until they were passed, here's what needs to happen. We need this amount of votes in the Senate, and this amount of votes in the House. And the reality of things is that now, right now, the Democrats are in, tr in charge of the House, the Senate, and the presidency, at least for the next year and a half. Now, it's a very, very good likely possibility that the Republicans could take over the House or the Senate in the next uh, election in 2022. And uh, the Republicans only need to take one seat in the Senate to take the majority. It's a 50-50 tie right now. The tiebreaker goes to the vice president, Kamala Harris. And that's the only reason why Democrats have control in the Senate. And in the House... The Republicans, actually, their lead is shrinking. and they, They've had a couple people die, and they've had a couple people retire from the House. Um, the Republicans have also lost one seat as well. But I think the Democrats' lead is now only three or four seats out of uh, 435 different seats. So it's less than 1%. So uh, it's very, very, very close. And uh, Senator Bernie Sanders says if they don't do enough for the American people right now, that history shows that uh, the majority party, when they have a total control like this, uh, will not keep their control if they don't do everything that they promise and everything that they've expected to do. And that's why we could see a lot in this next stimulus package, the American Families Plan. They're also proposing possible Social Security increases of anywhere from 200 to $279 more per month or making Social Security a minimum of 125% of the poverty level. That's actually President Joe Biden's plan, which would raise all Social Security beneficiaries to at least $1,341 per month. There's also substantial Medicare increases that would inc increase um, hearing, dental, vision, and hearing aids all for free and lower the uh, eligible Medicare eligibility age to age 60 or even as low as age 55. They're also probably going to include two years of free college for anybody that wants to go back to college, uh, two years of free community college in this next package, as well as two years of free preschool. And having free college will be an absolute major game changer. I expect student loan forgiveness will probably come after that. President Biden's already done three mini rounds of student loan forgiveness. And I also think they're going to expand the child tax credits which are those monthly stimulus payments that are going to start in July of $250 to $300 per month for every single child. That's already passed for one year in 2021. I think they're going to extend that for several more years. So uh, if the Democrats pass all those things, they'll probably stay in power. If they don't pass a majority of those things, well, then it's a very like very good likelihood that they won't stay in power because they didn't get enough things passed of what they promised. So We'll see. Let me know what your thoughts on who you think is going to uh, win in the next presidential election and this next midterm election, which will determine whether the Democrats remain in control. I'll keep you up to date with all of our daily news as well as everything stimulus related. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe down below so you don't miss out on new updates. I will keep you up to date on everything. New videos come out every day at 10 a.m. 3 p.m. and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Don't miss any episodes because we cover different provisions and different daily news in each video. You can click this video here to watch my newest stimulus check video next. And this video teaches you how to start your own business selling physical products on the Amazon FBA platform. I've already had dozens of students replace their 9 to 5 income by selling products on Amazon FBA. So click on one of those videos next. Thanks, guys, and I will see you in the next video.